Begin by connecting the provided microphone cable into the RTA mic input on the front left panel of the LMS. It will click into place. Connect the provided microphone into the other end of the mic cable and place it at your listening position. Ideally, you want to use a microphone stand to position the microphone as close to where your ears will be. However, feel free to improvise. Here you can see my microphone set up on my listening chair, right where my head would be and approximately uh, midline with my ears. Now, reposition yourself in front of your LMS device. Press the wizard button and follow the prompts on the LCD screen. Wizard menu. We want to arrow down to Run Auto EQ Level Assist Wizard. Use your down arrow button to highlight. Once highlighted, press the knob to select it. The AEQ module is highlighted. On the top of the LCD screen, it says Select Auto EQ to set up. OK, it's highlighted. Press the knob to select it. Select your wizard options. You want to arrow down to Auto EQ only and then select it. Press the knob. Now the screen asks you to select your target curve. You want to select recommended curve. It's already highlighted, so we'll press the knob to select it. It says now to connect your microphone and place it as shown. We're only going to leave it in one position, right where it is. We're ahead of the game. The screen now says press select on the bottom here. Press the knob one more time. Now the LCD screen and the wizard menu is prompting you to select the number of RTA mic measurements. You want to select two microphone measurements. We used to recommend four but have since learned that two is all that is necessary. So once two and good is highlighted, press the knob to select it. Start measurement for mic position one. Press select. It's important to remain quiet and not move. Our screen now says to start measurement for mic position 2. We're leaving our mic position right where it is, but we'll go ahead and do a second measurement. It says press select. Here we go. Again, try to be quiet and not move. The wizard program is calculating the auto EQ. You may now remove the microphone cable from the LMS device. Press the metal tab above the microphone cable and pull the microphone cable out. The LCD screen shows your auto EQ results. At the bottom highlighted it says select to continue. Press the same round knob to select. The screen prompts you and asks 
Do you want to run Auto EQ for another system? No, you don't. So you want to arrow up until no is highlighted. Select it by pressing the knob. Now we're back on the wizard menu and you can press the back button as your microphone measurements are complete. Press the back button twice and you are back on your main screen 10E custom two-way. In this view you will now notice that once you've completed the room correction microphone measurements you will see on the right side of your LMS device you have all these buttons are lit up. All the channels have been muted and you have to remember to unmute them by simply pressing the buttons. Turn out the lights. As explained in the manual, the ultra linear Sanders hybrid electrostatic speakers should not utilize room correction above 500 cycles. So our final recommended adjustments require us to zero out any room correction adjustments above 500 cycles. Also, we will minimize any room correction gain below 100 cycles to no greater than 4 dB. Start again by pressing the back button twice. Press the edit button and turn the knob until you highlight AEQ. Edit button, turn the knob, AEQ is highlighted. Press the knob to select it. You will note that once the AEQ module has been selected, you will see Auto EQ in the top left corner of the LCD window. And you will notice there are two vertical columns of information again to the left of the frequency response graph. Again, the left column lists the parameters while the right column lists their corresponding values. Start by holding down the up arrow until the highlighted box scrolls to the top and stops. The first two rows in both columns should look the same as they do here. The top left item should read Auto EQ. If I press the knob, the top right value in the top right column should read on, press the knob to go back to the left column, arrow down. The second item on the left should read flatten. The second item on the right should read manual. If for some reason any right column value is incorrect, you will simply highlight that item and rotate the round knob until it is correct. For example, perhaps it got moved to flat or auto EQ, rotate the knob so it says manual, and you're good. Press the knob to go back to the left column. In the left column, below the first two rows, you should see band 1 type, band 1 frequency, band 1 gain, and band 1 Q. Here they are on the left. However, there are a total of 14 bands of parametric equalization that the wizard program may utilize for room correction. So if you arrow down further, you'll see band 2 type, band 2 frequency, band 2 gain, and band 2 Q. And then the same thing for bands 3 through 14. Band 2 type, frequency, gain, Q. And if you continue to arrow down, it'll go down through 14. Because every room is different, your room correction frequencies your gain correction and your Q values will differ from what you see on my screen. However, the band type for all 14 bands should always read bell. So if we go back up here to band 2 type and press the knob to go over to the right column, if for some reason it says low shelf or high shelf doesn't say bell, rotate the knob till it says bell and you're good to go. You should also note that all room correction adjustments can be seen on the frequency response graph 
on the right side of the LCD screen over here. Once we zero out all room correction adjustments above 500 cycles, the increases and decreases in room correction will be replaced with a straight line from approximately right here in the middle. 500 cycles on up will become a straight line. Our final adjustments will be made in the right column only directly across from band 1 gain, band 2 gain, band 3 gain, etc. Press the up arrow until the highlighted item stops at the top. Make sure that the right column is highlighted. If the left column is highlighted, press this knob to move back to the right column. Let's arrow down to highlight the band 1 gain value that will be under band 1 frequency and directly across from band 1 gain. We're going to look at the effective frequency. We're going to apply our two rules here and we're going to adjust as necessary. Okay, you can see that band 1 frequency is 350 cycles. Any frequency between 100 and 500 cycles should be left corrected as is. Do not make any changes at all. Arrow down to band 2, gain value. Again, it's under band 2 frequency of 160 cycles and directly across from band 2, gain. Again, it's between 100 and 500 cycles. We do not make any changes. Proceed down to band 3, gain value, and you can see that we are, uh, that the room correction adjusted at 3.45 kilohertz, which is above 500 cycles, and it reduced the volume. We don't want any room correction above 500 cycles, so we have to zero that out. Continue to the next band gain value. Band 4 shows a frequency of 90 cycles and a negative 9.9 dB reduction, not an increase. So it is below 100 cycles, but it's well below plus 4 dB increase, so we leave it like it is. Arrow down to the next frequency and gain value which is 1.75 kilohertz with a plus 2.9 dB increase. Again, it's above 500 cycles. We have to reduce this to zero. Turn the knob until we reduce it to zero. Arrow down to the next band gain value on the right. The frequency was 670 cycles. Again, it's above 500 cycles, so whatever it did, we have to zero out. It increased it plus 3.6 dB. Let's zero that out. So you'll do the same principles, follow the same rules, regardless of what your values are on your screen. Let's go down to number 7. We're at 48.7 cycles with a reduction of minus 7.1 dB. Again, it's well below plus 4 dB gain. We leave it as is. Continue to arrow down to number 8. You can see that the frequency affected is 66 cycles with a plus 6 dB gain. That's a problem because we want to limit our room correction below 100 cycles to plus 4. Let's reduce that down to plus 4 dB to protect our amp base amplifier and our base speaker. Continue arrowing down. Let's go down to band 9 gain value, which is plus 6 at 258 cycles. Again, it's between 100 and 500 cycles. We leave it as it is. Proceed down to band number 10. Arrow down to band 10 gain of plus 2.4 at 1.22 kilohertz. Again, above 500 cycles, so we have to reduce this down to zero. Let's go down to band number 11. Okay, here we are showing a frequency of 1 kilohertz and a gain of zero. Once you see a band frequency of 1 kilohertz with zero gain, 
This indicates no more parametric equalization bands were used for your room correction. Press your store button three times and your back button to return to the main screen.